Hello friends, today the topic of my lecture is Introduction to Indian Theatre Part 1. In this lecture, I shall talk about the development and growth of Indian theatre during the Vedic and Classical period. I shall also give a brief introduction of traditional Indian theatre. The history of theatre in India dates back to Vedic age. The four Vedas are the Rig, the Sam, the Yajur, and the Atharva. The Vedas are among the oldest sacred texts. Composed in Vedic Sanskrit, the texts constitute the oldest layer of Sanskrit literature and the oldest scriptures of Hinduism. Vedas were a functional element of the ritual activity that had to be performed with precision and without variation for the good of the community and the world. That is why the text of the Vedas descended through centuries with very little alteration. The oldest of the collection is the Rig Veda. The traces of the ancient theatre can be observed in this Veda. Many of the Rig Veda hymns were composed in a dialogue form, presenting two characters in a ritualized dialogue with each other, so that when performed in ritual chant, a type of antiphon may have taken place between two priests over the sacrificial fire. The great sages Valmiki, Vyas and Panini had also thrown light on dramaturgy. Patanjali in his Mahabhashya mentioned that two dramas existed over the time, namely Kamsavad and Valivad. The origin of theatre of the early Vedic age is considered the most authentic and authoritative amongst all the later creations. The Epic Literature of India The Epic Literature of India has always been an exclusive source of content for traditional theatre forms such as Kathakali and Ramlila. The stories of India's epics are the integral part of India's culture. These stories appear in different iterations in every kind of theatre, from Sanskrit drama to Bollywood films. The epic literature of India includes two major epics, the Mahabharat and the Ramayan, as well as a large body of texts collectively called the Purans which consist of a variety of myths, stories and tales associated with religious devotion. The Mahabharat is the world's largest epic poem, consisting of some one lakh double verses. Mahabharata is not only an ageless description of ancient clan disputes and bloody warfare, but also an image of an ultimately Indian way of conceiving the world and man's duty in it. The Mahabharat is an immense work with numerous subplots and hundreds of characters and episodes, from which independent literary works have arisen. The Bhagavad Gita, a part of the Mahabharat, expresses a metatheatrical worldview that has informed Indian religion and theatre for 2000 years. The Ramayana, which is probably the world's most popular epic, talks about the struggle of Lord Rama with the demon king Ravan. The epic is less extensive than the Mahabharat, consisting of 12,000 double verses. Knowledge of the basic elements of this literature is essential to access theatre in India. The Natya Shastra The Natya Shastra is considered to be the earliest book on dramaturgy anywhere in the world. It is the grammar or the holy book of theatre by Bharat Muni, which provides detailed treatises on drama, performance, and visual art form. 
it talks about almost every practical aspect of theatrical art. In other words, it is a book of theatrical practice and theory that is much more interested in aesthetics than psychology. The Natya Shastra's primary interest is in the stylish possibilities of bodies in motion on a stage. The theory of theatrical performance that the Natya Shastra promotes has become important to understanding all the arts. One can hardly assess the quality of a novel or a poem or a dance or a painting without using the term ras, that is flavor, which the Natya Shastra identifies as a touchstone of aesthetic experience. The Natya Shastra exclusively talks about how theater is done from the construction of theater buildings to the application of makeup to the design and building of props, to arm movement, foot movement, eye movement, with additional chapters on music and audience appreciation. The Natya Shastra also confirms an attitude that associated theatrical performance with religious activity. The Natya Shastra consists of 36 chapters. Apart from the Natya Shastra, other Shastra manuals also give information about theatrical practices, each according to their own specific viewpoint. Vat Science Kam Shastra, the treatise on love, informs us about the kind of role that theatrical performances had in the life of the upper class educated male citizen. Kutalya's Arth Shastra, the treatise on politics and administration, on the other hand, gives detailed information about the role of different kinds of performers in the ideal yet highly hierarchical society described in this manual written in the 4th century BC. Now let us talk about the classical period. The classical period includes the writing and practice of theatre up to about 1000 AD. The most commonly read and performed examples of Sanskrit drama include play by Bhas, Shudrak, Vishakhadat, Bhavabhuti, especially Kalidas. The plays often concern the exploits of the kings and heroes of history. As with the Greek tragedies, historical figures of Sanskrit drama include mythical persons and the subjects of epic poetry. Supernatural beings of several varieties play important roles in the stories of Sanskrit drama. Important characters in Sanskrit dramas also come from the middle and lower classes, including soldiers, merchants, hermits and sages. With very few exceptions, the 300 or so Sanskrit dramas end at a happy note. In other words, we can say that all the conflicts are comfortably resolved at the end of the play. Sanskrit drama consistently regards existence as systematic, orderly and predictable. Most often, the potentially exciting moments of a drama occur offstage and are related to characters on stage by way of messengers, letters or eyewitnesses who can see what is happening out of the view of the other characters and out of the view of the audience as well. Nevertheless, as in many other dramatic traditions around the world, Sanskrit drama creates and sustains tension through the plans that characters lay in dialogue with each other. The obstacles that arise to prevent those plans from coming to fulfillment and the ways that characters choose to accomplish their aims anyway. The dialogue of Sanskrit drama consists of both verse and prose. 
with a single unified speech, a character may slip out of prose and into verse and back into prose several times. The effective use of figurative speech and imagery in the verses demonstrate the playwright's poetic skill. For instance, because of the verse in his play Shukuntala, the playwright Kalidas is perhaps regarded in India more as a poet than as a dramatist. In the tradition of Sanskrit theatre, actors are not only served as dancers but also as musicians. Sangami, Narham Nirgatiko, 
ನಾಗಂ ನೀರ್ ಮಧುಕ Besides the dramatic literature that survived from the period, the tradition of Sanskrit theatre gives us some practical information about play performance and also a theory about how we experience theatre. Theatre of Oral Traditions The period of 1000 AD onwards up to 1700 AD and beyond was characterized by the theater of oral traditions. The emergence of this kind of theater can definitely be linked with the change of political setup in India as well as the coming into existence of different regional languages in all parts of the country. The emergence of several regional languages brought about a great scope and platform for the development of folk theatre. As the languages were new, it was too early to expect any writing in those languages. That's why this whole period is known as folk or traditional, that is, theatre being handed over from generation to generation through an oral tradition. Traditional Indian theatre has always been an impressive tool to portray the unedited realities of life in the most expressive way. Although Indian theatre has its roots associated deeply with the vigour of the ancient Vedic era, ritualism, yet it is in the medieval era with the introduction of the traditional Indian theatre, Indian drama further gained that maturity. Well, with this, we come to the end of today's lecture. In the next lecture, I shall talk about the important types and forms of traditional Indian theatre. Thank you very much.